Okay, recording is started. All right, call to order the Beverages Licensing Authority hearing for Wednesday, July 19th, 2023. Thank you. And we will start with um, instructions for virtual hearing and rules of decorum. I'm gonna share my screen really quick. The city has engaged with community members to co-create a vision for productive, meaningful, and inclusive civic conversations. This vision supports physical and emotional safety for community members, staff, and board and commission members, as well as democracy for people of all ages, identities, lived experiences, and political perspective. More about this vision and the project's community engagement process can be found on our website, bouldercolorado.gov. The following are examples of rules of decorum found in the Boulder Revised Code and other guidelines that support this vision. These will be upheld during this meeting. All remarks and testimony shall be limited to matters related to city business. No participant shall make threats or use other form of intimidation against any person. Obscenity, racial epithets, and other speech and behavior that disrupts or otherwise impedes the ability to conduct a meeting are prohibited. Participants are required to sign up speaking using the name they are commonly known by and individuals must display their whole name before being allowed to speak online. Currently, only audio testimony is permitted online. If you are here to appear um, for something that's on the agenda, I will promote you to panelists, and then you'll be able to turn on your camera and talk to the BLA that way, but um, you won't be promoted until your um, item is called. Um, next, we have approval of beverage licensing authority minutes from June 21st, 2023. And I just have a quick note on this. Um, agenda item nine should read HB 2023 1061 and Colorado House Bill 231061. So there was just a couple typos in the numbers. Caitlin, I think we need to do a, a member roll call first. Oh my gosh, sorry. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> Um, yeah, let's do member roll call and then we'll go back to the minutes. Uh, if you'll just speak your presence out loud. Um, member Absalom? Member Absalom present. Member Carr? Member Carr present. Member Califano? Member Califano present. And uh, member Roberts? Member Roberts present. Thank you so much. Um, now we can move on to the approval of the minutes and um, just a little fix on agenda item nine should read HB 2023-1061 and Colorado House Bill 231061. Great. Um, for the minutes, are there any edits? Do any members have anything that needs to be fixed? Okay, not seeing any. Is there a motion? A member car will make a motion to approve minutes. Member Absalom would second. All in favor say aye. Member Califano will abstain. Member Absalom, aye. Member Carr, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Minutes approved. Thank you very much. Um, next, we have hearing agenda issues from licensing clerk. I have two things to bring to your attention. The first one is that there on the original agenda that was published in the daily camera, there was a typo in agenda item six. Um, it is a modification of premise, not a new application. And the correct premise address for this application is 1606 Constagia Street, Suite 3, Boulder, Colorado, 80301. Um, and then the Second agenda issue is that uh, for agenda item seven, the posting requirements were not met. Um, so it will need to be continued for agenda item seven. And that's all for um, agenda issues. Um, next, we have matters from Boulder Police Department, and I see the officer deputy. Good afternoon. Can everybody hear me? Um, just have a couple things. Uh, I had received an inquiry regarding a incident that happened um, up on the hill in February. And there was a local licensee, uh, Chicken on the Hill, that was uh, mentioned in that investigation. Um, 
the investigation centered around an assault or a series of assaults that happened. Um, and I just wanted to clarify for the BLA. Um, I've read all of the reports um, associated with that. And there was no indication that the involved party was uh, inside or and or drinking at uh, Chicken on the Hill from the reports that were filed. So I just wanted to pass that on. I do not have any active investigation um, into that establishment. Um, I wanted to share with you guys, I don't know if you keep up with or are subscribers to the state liquor enforcement um, advisory groups. Um, I get their updates frequently and I was going through some recent ones and there are some interesting things that are uh, coming out of that. So I just wanted to share with the group um, a couple of these. Um, so the, as you know, the Liquor Advisor Group is made up of 34 stakeholders statewide. And with that 34 member group, they this year they split up into three subgroups to further work on different topics. And it could be topics like the marketplace, could be licensing, could be um, retail operations. So out of these subgroups, um, they were working on different different topics. And there's a few that they've actually, the, the licensing advisory group as a whole has voted on. And I wanted to share some of those with you. Um, they have uh, passed a uh, proposal to um, allow liquor stores to remain open on Christmas. Um, now keep in mind for any of these, any of these items passed by the liquor advisory group, it still has to go through the legislature. So these are just items that are discussed, studied, presented, public comment input. And then if the liquor advisory group passes them a motion on them or language uh, to change the current statutes or rules, then that gets forwarded to the legislature. So this is by no means, none of these are by no means um, a sure deal. So again, the first one was to allow liquor stores to remain open on Christmas day. Um, the second one it, uh, deals with hours of operations for establishments. So right now you cannot uh, serve alcohol between the hours of 2 a.m. and 7 a.m. Um, there's a proposal that that be changed to the hours of 4 a.m. and 7 a.m. So what that would mean was that bars, for instance, would be able to stay open until 4 a.m. Uh, with a proposed um, hard last call at 2 a.m. Um, and then allow patrons to remain in the establishment after that last call at 2 a.m. up until the 4 a.m. closing. Again, that was uh, voted on by the entire uh, advisor group and it passed. And so that will be something that they uh, will likely be presenting to the uh, legislature. A um, couple of things that were they, they received input on and there, I expect there'll be future discussion on these. These were not voted on. There's been no formal um, language presented. Uh, one has to do with the self checkout of alcohol. As you know, you can go to a uh, FMB off-premise, FMB wine off-premise uh, establishment, and you can buy alcohol. And in many of those places, you can use the self-checkout lane. When that happens, um, your little register lights up, and the clerk comes over and checks your ID. They are supposed to remain with you at that station, whoever comes over and it has to be a person that's appropriate age, um, they're supposed to remain with you until your transaction is totally complete because they need to ensure that the person that is paying for the alcohol is the same person that they check the ID for so that a party who's over 21 isn't paying for alcohol that uh, may be for an underage in, in as much as that may guarantee that. Um, so, a couple of things have been proposed, like a single point of sale for alcohol at those establishments, uh, a separate counter, um, a dedicated uh, lane 
Um, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, there was a input received from the Littleton, City of Littleton licensing clerk, or actually city clerk, regarding um, just throwing out a proposal that perhaps we could do liquor license renewals every two years instead of annually. Um, and that is a, a, a early proposal. I haven't seen any other discussion from the advisory group on that. So that may, may or may not go anywhere. With each of these, um, from what I've read, and specifically with the expanding of the operating hours for bars, there is a specific uh, intention to leave local control in place. In other words, it could be an opt-out or an opt-in, but it would allow local municipalities to say, no, we don't want to have bars stay open till four, we're gonna stay with two or whatever they decided. So, um, and, and that's the case with uh, a lot of these that are, they're, they're heavy on trying to keep local control in place when it's appropriate. Some rules and regulations and statutes, of course, are statewide and they want them to apply uniformly. Um, and the last thing uh, they are looking at, are there options for a standardized statewide uh, alcohol service training that would be an alternative to TIPS? Um, as you know, TIPS has been around for many years um, and they're just looking to try to uh, see if they can standardize everything and, and make it a little easier on licensees. But no further details on that. And that's all that I have. I just thought I would give you those updates from the Liquor Advisory Group. If you want to subscribe to their emails, you can. If you go to the Department of Revenue website under Liquor Enforcement, you can um, select the button to subscribe to their updates. And then you will get all of these emails regarding uh, rules and regulations, and then all the uh, meeting uh, links to the subgroup and the, and the main liquor advisory group. And you can read their agendas, you can read their meeting minutes, you can look at their votes, how they voted. Um, so um, it, it's a good way if you wanna know what's coming um, to uh, take a look at. And that's all that I have. Great, thank you, Officer Denick. Are there any questions from any of the board members for Officer Denick? Not seeing any. All right, well, thank you again, Officer Denick. Okay. I'll be here. Thank you, Officer Denick. Uh, I still don't know if there's anyone from the Responsible Association of Retailers. The next agenda item is uh, matters from Responsible Association of Retailers. And if there's someone in the attendees list, if you'll just raise your hand so I can promote you to talk. Okay, I'm not seeing anyone. If uh, Nathan makes his way, then I will let him in. Next, we have agenda item four, general public comment for future beverage licensing authority hearings. If anyone is here to make general public comment about something that's not currently on the agenda, please raise your hand and I'll promote you. Last call for general public comment. All right, I'm not seeing any. Um, next we have agenda item five, which is public hearing and consideration of an application filed on March 7th, 2023 from Ados LLC, DVA Ados, 1143 13th Street, Boulder, Colorado, 80302. Jose Edos Aguilera, 100% owner and proposed registered manager with a premise business mailing address for a renewal of a hotel restaurant type liquor license. And I'm going to go ahead and promote Mr. Aguilera to panel so he can talk and turn his camera on. Okay, and I'll hand it over to the board. Hi, Caitlin, um, is it okay to get him sworn in real quick? Absolutely. 
Uh, Mr. Zagulera, is there anyone else who's going to be appearing for this matter besides yourself? No. Okay, great. I'm just going to swear you in really quick. Um, if you'll just raise your right hand for me. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is true and correct? Yes. And do you swear or affirm that the premise has been posted for at least 10 days prior to today's hearing? Yes. Great. Now. Great. And uh, Mr. Seguilero, is that how you pronounce your last name? Salguero. Salguero. Um, are you represented by counsel today at all? No. All right. I'm going to go ahead and read the um, procedures into the record. This is a public hearing before the Beverage Licensing Authority of the City of Boulder to determine whether or not the application of applicant Ados LLC doing business as Ados uh, for a renewal of a hotel restaurant type liquor license shall be granted or denied. <clears throat> this hearing is conducted pursuant to the laws of the state of Colorado and the rules of the Beverage Licensing Authority of the City of Boulder. The purpose of this hearing is to receive information, data, and testimony by interested parties in order to enable this authority to make the findings and to reach the conclusions required to be made by state law as to whether or not the license shall be renewed. Interested parties are the applicant, residents of the neighborhood affected by the license as previously determined by the authority, and the owners and managers of a business located within the neighborhood. This hearing shall be limited to questions of whether or not there is good cause not to renew the license as set uh, form in the notice of hearing dated uh, July 19, 2023. A record is being made of these proceedings. Those who desire to be heard shall identify themselves by stating their name, spelling their last name, and stating their pertinent address. They shall also be sworn in by the board secretary. Is there any um, ex parte communication or conflict of interest from anyone on the board? Member Califano, no. Member Absalom, no. Member Carr, no. Member Roberts, no. Great. And is there anyone um, in the attendees list that wishes to speak to this um, agenda item? If you could just raise your hand. Not seeing any. All right. Um, Mr. Salguero, you may proceed. Well, I uh, first and foremost, uh, would like to thank you all for uh, considering here and uh, you know, meeting with me and hopefully to understand that uh, I guess that we're here because yes, I fell behind in taxes. I just paid the second half of August today or the year. Um, I know that I needed to do that. Um, the Hill is it's a real, real, real challenge. Um, last uh, winter break, I almost did not make it. And I have my landlord to thank for that. They, they work with me. It's the reasons why I tend to fall behind, you know, paying taxes, but know that it's hard when you try to do it the right way. Um, and I, what, I, what, I, what I mean by that is it's being here on the hill, every trying to uh, bring the different cuisine and I guess environment that the hill is not known for makes my, my, my job a whole lot tougher. Um, it's, it's a real struggle for me. And, uh, it, you know, it's the only reason why I, I find, I, I, I find behind, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm nervous. I'm, I fall behind. Um, but know that uh, I have, uh, tried to correct everything in order to continue. And for eight years I've been here and I've struggled, try to remain positive. And now I see the hotel being built, the hotel that I've been hearing about for eight years. So I'm like, one last push can do this. And that's just kind of like my state of mind. Obviously, for us to continue, I do need to rely on serving wine and beer with my food because it goes with my food. I don't know uh, what else I can tell you guys. Uh, I just hope that... Uh, that you kind of take that into consideration of just how hard it is to do business um, up here on this hill. I, I am working close to 120 hours a week because I'm the only one right now that it's actually handling alcohol because I can't hire anybody. I can't afford to hire anybody. 
but I want to continue. I, I just, I just see the, 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 the light at the end of the tunnel with that hotel. And if that doesn't change me, I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit on my own terms or something. But for the meantime, I just feel like I need to keep pushing forward until we see that. Thank you very much. And I have a question. Are you paid in full now? Um, yes, I did pay that second. Um, the uh, second half of the, this year. And I do have a payment plan to catch up. So I know that that is done. Caitlin, can you confirm that? Yes, this renewal is approved by sales tax and occupation tax. Great. Are there any other questions from the board members? Not seeing, oh. No, Mike. I will, well, uh, yeah, yes, I will say something. Mr. Saguero? Yeah. Um, so I said, you said that you only have a couple of employees. I'm looking at um, what you supplemented here um, in the packet. And yes, it looks like you have three employees total managing alcohol. They're gone. So They're, it's just you. Just me right now. Yeah, I, I did hire earlier this year, Austin and Anna. Obviously unreliable people that it's just better if I don't rely on them than to try to make it work. You know, it's like not 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 what I needed. Um, and I that was early this year and pretty much since you know late March, things have just been enough so that I can just handle it myself. And you know, quite honestly, I for the time being, I'm okay doing it just because I feel more in control. And I feel more like I'm actually taking care of my guests better than most of these college students that I tend to come across. You had mentioned that um, beer and wine go well with your food products, but this is a hotel restaurant type license, correct? Chair? Yeah, I mean, I do have spirits and all that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I think that's, that's that makes me a little more concerned around controlling that um, in terms of the fact that you do have spirits on site um, and managing that. I don't no, I'm not looking at your sales in terms of what you do in that. But if you are the one person in control, please, um, my one thing to say to you is that be careful around um, spirits and hard liquor on the hill. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't know. It, it, it's been eight years. I, uh, I can I understand the hill a lot more than, you know, when I first got here. And, and I try to do the bad, like, I try to 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 not do what everybody else does, um, and I think that that's kind of part of my struggles. I only ask that you watch hard liquor around your sales, and that's the only thing I wanted to ask you. Thank you. Sounds good. Yep. Thank you, sir. All right, Mr. Salguero, did you have anything else you wanted to present? No. I think. Uh, yeah. All right, at this time, we will close for deliberation. Is there a discussion, a motion? Uh, I would say, I think given that the sales tax is paid up and Mr. Salguero has a payment plan, um, you know, I think I, I have no problem with this. I don't know if anyone else has any thoughts on it. I guess my only concern that I wanted to mention in the discussion again was around one person handling the sale of those things. I don't know exactly how that works in that specific business, but when you do have a hotel restaurant type license, it gives you a lot of latitude to sell a lot of things. Um, but it sounds like Mr. Aguero is on it, and um, I'd be I'd be willing to make a motion to approve the renewal. Thank you, Member California. Remember. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. You got it. Uh, Member Califano would second. All in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Carr, aye. Member Roberts, aye. All right, renewal approved. Thank you so very much, everyone. Um, Good luck. I hope that I can finally gain traction, the traction I need, because I am tired. I am tired. But I got the will to continue. Thank you. Thanks. I'm good to go, right? Yeah. All right, thank you. Okay. Next, um, we have agenda item six, which is public hearing and consideration of an application filed on May 12th 
2023 from Bank and Love LLC, DBA Black Billy Market, 1601 Constega Street, Suite 3, Boulder, Colorado, 80301. Peter Christian Olovio, member, Hosea D. Rosenberg, member, and Ashley Ogden, registered manager, with the business mailing address of um, 1601 Constega Street, Suite 3, Boulder, Colorado, 80301 for a modification of a hotel restaurant type liquor license. And one quick note on that as well is that since the um, agenda was published, the registered manager has um, been approved to Jeffrey Foster instead of Ashley. Um, and then I believe that Peter is here. So, and if anyone else is here to speak on this matter, please go ahead and raise your hand and I'll come up you. mute can you see us yes okay i'm peter this is hosea and that's jeff foster who is our new director of operations and the registered manager for here and that's actually news to us we didn't know that that was approved already um oh. but we, we did <laughs> submit that uh after uh we submitted uh ashley left us at the end of june i believe uh, and so we got that uh, application to transfer to a new registered manager uh, in Jeff's name uh, as well. And I did notice, um, so it, we're 1606 Conestoga, not 1601. And we now have the whole building. So our original mailing address was suite number three, but now we're just the whole building. Oh, great. I'll make that um, note on your application or your file that we have in here okay and then one other thing i did notice on the agenda it said our mailing address was 175 bellevue drive no idea who lives there but none of us do um so that i just want to make sure we had everything correct for, in terms of uh, our address for you guys thank you for that correction that was a copy and paste error on my part and i appreciate you bringing that to our church okay thanks um and then um who's going to be testifying today? uh i think i i will be the primary person testifying and if Jose needs to testify, uh, he will jump in as well. I okay, don't know great. if Jeff has I'll anything. You both in. Um, I'll just have you both raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the statements you're about to give are true and correct? Yes. Yes. And do you swear or affirm that the premise has been posted for at least 10 days prior to today's hearing? Yes. yes. Great. I will hand it over to the board. Great, and since you're not represented by counsel, I'm gonna go ahead and read the procedures into the record. <clears throat> this is a public hearing before the Beverage Licensing Authority of the City of Boulder to determine whether or not the application of applicant Bacon Love LLC doing business as uh, Black, Belly Mar Black Belly Market, excuse me, um, for a request to modify the premise of a hotel restaurant type liquor license shall be granted or denied. This hearing is conducted pursuant to the laws of the state of Colorado and the rules of the Beverage Licensing Authority of the City of Boulder. The purpose of this hearing is to receive information, data, and testimony by interested parties in order to enable this authority to make the findings to, uh, and to reach the conclusions required to be made by state law as to whether or not the premise may be altered. Interested parties are the applicant, residents of the neighborhood affected by the license as previously determined by the authority, and the owners and managers of a business located in the neighborhood under consideration. A record is being made of these proceedings. Those who wish to de or who desire to be heard shall identify themselves by stating their name, spelling their last name, and stating their pertinent address. They shall also be sworn in by the board secretary. Are there any uh, ex parte communications or conflicts of interest from any of the board members? Member Califano, no. Member Absalom, no. Member Carr, no. Member Roberts, no. Great. And are there any um, individuals as participants that wish to speak to this agenda item? If you could please raise your hand. Not seeing any. All right, you may proceed. All right, great. Uh, so uh, we took over the former Quiznos space. I don't know how many of you have ever been to Black Belly, but on the west side of the of our building, when we originally opened in 2014, uh, we had just the east side of the building. There was a Dizzy's Donuts next to us and a Quiznos on the west side. Um, we modified our liquor license when we took over the Dizzy's Donuts space, which I believe was in 2017. 
Um, we made that a, a dedicated butcher shop and market for breakfast and lunch items. Um, and then when Quiznos did not renew their lease, uh, we uh, took the opportunity to take that space as well uh, for an expanded butcher shop market uh, grocery items and uh, breakfast lunch service, um, as well as a patio uh, on the west side uh, of the building. And uh, uh, we would like to be able to serve uh, alcohol, as we've been doing for eight and a half years, uh, in our entire premise, um, and therefore request that we can expand our licensed premise to include the new space. Great, thank you for that. Um, are there any questions from any of the board members? I just had one, there's no change in, sir, in terms of where the alcohol is going. You're just keeping everything inside the licensed premise and just extending that out, right? There's no sort of out, outdoor service outside of that, right? Everything's staying inside of that premise that you're extending to? Uh, well, there is a patio, which is- I see, that in the draw. I see that in the drawing, yeah. Yep, exactly. So there, nothing beyond that. That is uh, that is controlled uh, e egress um, to egress uh, locations. There, um, it's a permanent fence around that. Um, it's already got signs up. It says no alcohol past this point. Just like our other patios that we have, there is actually uh, a patio on the north side of the building as well. Uh, we're not currently serving alcohol there, but it is part of our license premise. Um, so. No, nothing beyond that. There is no ex extended premise in the parking lot. We stopped doing that once the restrictions for the pandemic were lifted. That was my question around that because I'd seen the extended parking lot stuff, but um, thank you. That was the only question I had. People didn't like sitting in a parking lot. <laughs> well, we had a tent up there as well. That was during the pandemic where we could get people outside, but that's gone. It's parking again, and we're just sticking to our patios in our dining area. No other questions from Mike? Uh, the only thing I had, and I'm just confirming this, um, for your petition, it looks like you didn't have any opposed and all were in favor that were eligible to sign. Am right. I reading that correct? I think there might have been one person who said she didn't drink and therefore didn't want to sign it, but um, that was it. And all of the businesses uh, that we talked to were all in favor. I, we feel like we've been really good neighbors, and really good for this neighborhood um for the last eight and a half years so I think that was reflected by our petitions great thank you is there any other questions from any other board members all right not seeing any uh, is there anything else you'd like to present with us no i think everything that was requested uh, we've sufficiently provided in our packet and uh, unless there's any other questions for us we don't have anything else to add Great, thank you. At this time, we'll close for deliberation. Is there any discussion, any motions? I'll make a motion to approve. Member Absalom would second. All in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Carr, aye. Member Roberts, aye. All right, modification approved. Good luck. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. All. Quick, quick question. Uh, when does that become effective? I, I, we couldn't remember the last time we did this, whether we had to wait for the state to approve it or whether they have already approved it pending your approval or whether it becomes effective immediately or that's our only question. Unfortunately, with um, standard modifications, the state doesn't do a concurrent review of them. So I will be sending it to them. Um, I should have plenty of time to send it to them this afternoon. And then hopefully they'll be able to review it in a timely manner. And then once they review it and send it back to me, then I'll schedule a little virtual inspection with you all um, and I'll be able to issue it the virtual inspection. So hopefully no more than just a couple more weeks. It just kind of depends on how long the state takes, um, but I will be in touch as soon as I hear from them. Okay, great. Thank um, you very much. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks. I think we can leave. Okay. Let's see. Next we have agenda item seven, which is public hearing and consideration of an application filed on May 12th, 2023 
from Bookcliff LLC, DBA Bookcliff Vineyards, 1501 Lee Hill Drive, Unit 17, Boulder, Colorado, 80304. Tectonic Enterprises 100% owner, Christopher Allison, managing member and proposed registered manager. Jordan Dickard, managing member and William K. Thompson, managing member with the premise business mailing address for a new Vintners restaurant, so book relations. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of this hearing, um, the applicant did not meet the 10 day posting requirements. So then therefore they will need to be um, continued. I do have Adam Stapen, who's their um, attorney. Um, he has his hand raised, are you okay if I let him in here? Okay, great. And Mr. Stapen, perfect. Awesome. Okay, I will hand it over to the board on this one. Um, and Mr. Stephen, if there's anyone else that would like to speak, just let me know and I'll let them in. Okay, thank you very much. Can everyone hear me okay? Can we just record your appearance? Oh, sure. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Adam Stapen, S-T-A-P-E-N, registration number 27506, appearing on behalf of the applicant. Bookcliff LLC for the new Vintners restaurant license there within your city limits. Um, I just learned literally 15, 20 minutes ago that posting did not occur. And as you might imagine, um, clients are quite upset about how this happened and why it happened. And so I kind of quickly had my assistant run through emails to get an idea of what happened here. And I guess what I'd like to do is maybe go through that a little bit with you folks and see, um, I understand posting is a statutory requirement for the issuance of a license, but I was wondering maybe given the facts and circumstances of where we are, if we couldn't have a special meeting of the board uh, within a 10 day posting period to help move this forward. So, Long story short, we filed the application. Jan and Novak, my paralegal, filed it. Um, and when we received notice of the posting, uh, Ms. Kellogg sent the notice on July 6, 2023 to Jana Novak, Jana L. Novak at gmail.com, not to the Dylan Dill files, our, our email addresses. It looks like that was never responded. I never received notice of this. Liquor Pros never received notice that posting was ready. So I accept my responsibility for believing it was occurring because no one said it didn't happen. No one said, hey, you know, typically I would get an email CC with me that says, hey, would you please get the posting done? Or hey, posting didn't happen on this date. What's going on? I was under the impression that posting had occurred. It looks like, and Caitlin, I understand, was you know doing her job sending out notice, but it went to a gmail.com address, not to a Dylan Dill address. Um, that was on July 6, 2023. On July 18, 2023, Caitlin sent another email out to the same Jana L. Novak at gmail.com address, um, saying that the poster has not been retrieved or posted, therefore, they have to continue this hearing. Again, we, I didn't receive notice of it, nor did anyone in my staff receive notice of this. I can tell you Jan is no longer with us. Um, that doesn't mean she had any intent not to give us this email or not. I don't know if she actually received it or if that's a proper email address of hers or not. Then I can tell you that I believe later on that afternoon on the 18th of July, which was yesterday, uh, an email was then sent to Jay Novak at dillandill.com saying, hey, I don't know if you're getting these emails or not. Can you follow up? Lindsay Stintz, my paralegal, another one of our paralegals who's now looking in Jana's emails, who's been looking since Jana has left us, found this email and replied back to Caitlin saying, Jana's not Dylan Dill. I'll be handling her applications. I'll look into this. Um, and that was yesterday at noon. I can tell you I was never informed of it by then, but obviously, as you know, the 10-day posting had come and gone. So where we are now is um, this application is a, one of two applications these folks have. 
pending within local jurisdictions in the state of Colorado. Obviously, Book Cliff Vineyards has the location in your backyard. It was a producer level client, um, a producer level licensee. My client is seeking a Vintners restaurant license because Christopher Allison, who you would hopefully would have heard from today, has interest in other restaurants holding hotel and restaurant class licenses, him and his family. And that's why part of this acquisition, we had to convert it to a Vintners restaurant license. Book Cliff Vineyards also has another area in Palisade in Mesa County, and that's the other application that we've got going on now. Um, I can tell you I've been in direct contact with TTB, a uh, Gina Yankee, who is finalizing her review of the, of the winery permit to be able to issue the winery permit, hopefully within the next several days or whatever we deem closing necessary to happen. This obviously has hit me from left field. Um, I just briefly, literally had two minutes to look at the emails before I jumped on here and walking through them as I see them. I know there's no way we can avoid the posting. It's a jurisdictional requirement, um, but I would ask the you know, leniency and understanding of the authority, um, seeing how this was an existing witness or existing vineyard operation or winery operation in the backyard. It's not new. We're not asking to increase the density of licenses or the frequency of licenses in your area. It's just a sense of change of an owner. And unfortunately that happened this way. That if there's any way for you folks to schedule a hearing for this application, knowing that once we get the 10 day posted, we can have that hearing. Obviously, you've seen the petitions. There's no one here in opposition at this public hearing right now seeking opposition of it. Um, and I'm just thinking out loud. Uh, if I'm a, as the seat of my pants, so I apologize if I'm not making sense or if I'm going in circles. But I'm just trying to find a way to remedy what has occurred. Um, and I can tell you, if, if they're going to land on my desk or anyone else here, within that time frame of knowing posting how to get done, we would have dropped everything and made sure that got done. I think you folks know that. Um, unfortunately, it went to a Gmail email. Jan is Gmail. Jan is no longer with us. And by the time it got into our email queue, it was the 18th of July, which was yesterday. Um, so uh, I have my clients here. You see Christopher Allison, uh, Jordan, I think William may also be on here as well. I don't know, but um, just wanting to throw that out there and see if we can't talk about that since we had this time earmarked anyways for this hearing to see what you folks think would be a potential next hearing date to have this Vintners restaurant license, which in essence is the same operation that exists now, but instead of being a producer level, it's a retail level license. Um, so I think I've said quite a bit. Um, wanting to hear what you folks have to say or care person, I'll answer any questions you may have um, and take, take the lead from you from here on out. Hey, Lynn, a uh, quick question. Where did that email come from? Good question. So um, that email is the email that, so the Jenna L. Novak at gmail.com is the email that was, um, the application was submitted with. So when you submit an application at the city of Boulder, um, you do it through a customer self-service portal that requires an email registration. And that is the email that's on this application. Um, I will always use the email that is used, the customer self-service portal is used through. So um, it's not uh, strange that that happened. That's what the email is associated with. I have corresponded with Jana through her Dill and Dill email. So sometimes when someone is, when I don't get a response or something, I'll just look for other emails that they might have corresponded with me with. Um, so that's why I forwarded it to that email. Um, we didn't realize that the poster hadn't been picked up until this Monday. So until, what was that, the 17th, um, when Kristen Teague went to our little pickup lockers and realized that it was still in there. Um, so that was the first time that we had realized that it wasn't picked up. Um, yes. So that's kind of what happened. If you have any other questions, just let me know. Uh, Mr. Stapen, just a thought. You may want to contact Jana and have them put some sort of out-of-office automatic reply that says they're no longer with you. 
um, I feel like that could have um, mediated this whole situation. Well, no, I know, but I mean, no, if if she would have, if the email would have went to the Janet Dillon deal, we would have received it. We had somebody monitoring her emails from the moment she left. Someone was monitoring her email. So when it first came into our Dillon Dill account, that within 20 minutes, I think, of getting it, I think we first received it from Dillon Dill account uh, July, Tuesday, July 18th at 12.07. And response was made Tuesday, July 18th at 12.11. So a four minute response, we got, we'll, we're on that, but unfortunately we had no control over the gmail.com. Yeah. I understand that, but um, just a, a good best practice, maybe not use, it sounds like that's a personal account. But that is her personal account, correct. And I don't know why it was set up that way. I don't. That's what they submitted with the application. So that's what they submitted, correct. So that was what was used to transfer the application from our office into your portal. So in the future, when submitting those, because um, I'm guessing you have various staff that submit those. Um, correct. Yeah, just ensure that they're using their Dill and Dill email account. I will promise you a thousand times over, this is never going to happen again. Um, as far as a special hearing 10 days out, I know that the next two weeks for me, I'm pretty swamped with things and work. I'm out of town part of it. Um, I don't know how the rest of the board member feels about a special hearing. I mean, I'd chime in here a little bit around special hearings. They generally are conducted based on other extenuating circumstances, whereas this sounds like there might have been a little bit of negligence on the part of the applicant in this part, in this component, because you had someone who put in the wrong email, right? That was that was not a fault of licensing here in the city of Boulder. Um, I don't feel like granting a special hearing for this type of set of circumstances makes sense to me personally. I'm willing to continue it to the next month for sure. Member Carr, Member Roberts, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I I do. Um, I, I have been thinking about this. Um, I hear kind of both sides of it. And um, it sounds to me like this was, you know, an, an oversight. And I understand, you know, businesses, people moving on and leaving. Um, yes, the email address should have been the work email address. But um, I mean... Mr. Stapen has appeared in front of us a number of times, um, as well as other members of his firm. And I, I do believe that this is a one-time type of situation. I would be inclined to grant a special hearing um, under like the condition, like, you know, this would this would never happen again. And um, you know, the proper his firm was able to put in some sort of control to make sure that they were <clears throat> submitted with um email addresses from that are from related. Member Roberts. Um, I, I agree a lot with what member Carr said. I'm, I'm more lenient. I understand that people put in the wrong email address when they're first signing up for things. Um, and I'm not opposed. I, I guess what I would want to know is more about a special hearing. Like how long does that take? who is required, because it also sounds like a lot of maybe taxpayer dollars to hold one of these. We've got quite a mem few members of the city on here. So that would be my concern is best use of our, what, what best serves the community and also the business. Well, not approving this until next month. Are they going to see a big impact? So I guess I need to know a little bit more. I would agree. Um, um with member Absalom in that special hearings are typically very specific extenuating circumstances. Um, I think we've only had maybe two since in, in my seven years on the board, maybe three. Um, they're, they're really for special situations. And this, I agree, is just an oversight. Um, and as I said, if it would be within the 10 days, if we do approve a special hearing, I, I can guarantee I'm not going to be able to attend. And so all three of you would have to attend. And I don't know how realistic that is, given your schedules. I think to member Robert's point as well, you know, when you talk about how much it takes from city licensing, right? Because city licensing did their diligence in this. This was a fault of the applicant. So 
to put more work on our licensing team has, who does a great job at everything and has done everything they're checking all these things i i personally don't think that that it's for a special hearing and i i respect so much what um mr Stapen has done around licensing i've seen him and worked with him on both sides of this um throughout many years but i, I have to say special hearings along those lines i wouldn't put that onus on the city government based on the fact that they put a wrong email in that's all i'm saying around that and I'm, I'm willing to discuss further and i would second um member absalom in that and i mean this in a good way mr Stapen. this is very out of character for your um your firm or anything so typically you have everything put together so um, i do sympathize with that situation but i think a special hearing is definitely um i, I don't think this qualifies um with extenuating circumstances for a special hearing Anybody else have anything? Yeah, I, I Member Robert brought up a really good point about the cost to the city and to taxpayers. Um, and I, I think, given some more of the background that you and, and Member Absalom also shared, I would be leaning to say that this doesn't seem like an extenuating circumstance based on us. And like my point remains the same. You know, Mr. Staben and his team have done a great job every time I've met with them, but I, I wouldn't want to incur additional costs for the city uh, and city staff um, for something that's not really our fault. Uh, Christiana, do we need a motion for that? Yes. So um, somebody should make a motion either to. Um, grant the request to hold a special hearing on whatever specific date and time that might be which if you're going to go that way that would have to we should have a conversation about that um but if you're not going to go that way the motion would be to um, continue the hearing until the next bla meeting thank so, you member absalom will make a motion to continue this agenda item to the august bla hearing member califano would second that all in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Carr, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Mr. Stapen, with your um, very limited time and knowing this information, I do appreciate you coming forward and speaking to us about this and explaining the situation to the best that you could. Yeah, and again, please understand, I understand you say it's the applicant's fault. Really, it's the law firm's fault, not the applicant. The applicant are good folks trying to do what they got to do. and. So I just want to make that distinction on the record as well. The applicant themselves have nothing to do with this, as you probably know. Um, Caitlin, is the is the next hearing the 16th or when is that in August? August 16th, yes. And then I just want to confirm that we have the right email address. So I will um, correspond with yourself and Lindsay and Liquor Pros for um, the, and I can put the applicant's email address in there as well for the next poster pickup, which will be available on August 3rd. What was that? The August 3rd will be available for pickup? Yes. Got it. All right. Well, thank you again, Mr. Stapen. No, thank you, folks. I appreciate both ways you were thinking and understand how you came out. So I do appreciate that. Um, and you guys have a wonderful day. You as well. Uh, next, we have agenda item eight, which is matters from Assistant City Attorney. That would be me. <laughs> um, I don't have anything to um, mention to you or talk to you about today. If you guys have any questions for me, please feel free to ask. Cool. All right, next we have agenda item nine, which is matters from licensing clerk. We have three applications for boundary setting um, for the August hearing. Um, the first one is 
for the Hapa Group Inc. DBA Hapa Sushi Grill and Saki Bar for a permanent modification of a hotel restaurant type liquor license application at 1048 Pearl Street, Suite 105, Boulder, Colorado, 80302. Um, I have some suggested boundaries for them. And that is um, on the north, Maxwell Avenue to High, south, Arapaho Avenue, east is 17th Street, and west is 6th Street. And as always, I have these pulled up on Google Maps if you want to see what that is like. Is that their current location, or is that where they're moving? This is where they're moving. So isn't there a licensed premise right next to that space? It, yeah, that so place took, was a licensed premise at one point. It was. Yeah, I took from Bar Taco, which is 1048 Pearl Street, Suite 101, and theirs is 1048 Pearl Street, Suite 105. And it really only went to Arapaho. I feel like we should go a little further south than that, maybe University. Yeah, do you want to see? Let me share my screen so you can see what's going on. Thank you. Yeah, so this is the premise. And then that is Bar Taco, which is why I put twenty. I would agree with Chair Califano that we should maybe extend it to university. Um, there's a big neighborhood in there that will be affected by that. And what happens there in that neighborhood is you have college students walking up and down to that space. And once they open up in that space, it's going to change that foot traffic. So I'd like to I see some that. Of those communities in there kind of chime in on what's going on with that. That space is huge, by the way. It is large. Um, so it's going to be a lot of college kids shuffling up and down from that big space that is closer than where Hop is on the mall and easier to access to walk up and down. So I think the larger, the better on that. And I agree with member Kyle Pano on that. All right, I would make a motion to keep the other, the Northeast, South and West premises and then change to um, Arapaho Avenue for the South. Said university, right? Instead of- Oh Arapaho. yeah, excuse me, I read it on the map. I would second that motion. All in favor say aye, member Califano aye. Member Absalom aye. Member Carr, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Sorry, I was muted. Um, the next one is Granite Building Bar LLC DBA Garage Sale Vintage for a new tavern type liquor license at 1701 Pearl Street, Suite 100, Boulder, Colorado, 80302. Um, I have suggested boundaries from Laughing Goat Coffee House at 1709 Pearl Street, Boulder, Colorado, 80302. So that's here and the premise is here. Um, and those boundaries are High Street Extended on the north, Arapaho Avenue on the south, Folsom Street on the east, and Broadway on the west. Zoom out for you. I feel like that does encompass some pretty decent amount of neighborhoods. What was it on the north? High Street Extent. And what about on the south? Arapa. So that goes over Canyon through that neighborhood. I'd make a motion to approve those boundaries. Member, Member, second that motion. Member Carr seconds that motion. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Carr, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Thank you. And we'll go to the last one here. The last one is Nopolitos LLC, DBA Nopolitos, for a change of location of a hotel restaurant type liquor license at 1805 29th Street, Suite 1138, Boulder, Colorado, 80301. Um, the suggested boundaries for this I pulled from BJ's Restaurant and Brew House. So this is the applicant um, address, and this is BJ's um, at 169028th Street. And their boundaries were Bluff Street extended on the north, 
Colorado Avenue on the south, Foothills Parkway on the east, and 20th Street on the west. Member Califano would make a motion to approve those. Member Carr will second that motion. Member Carr will second that motion. All in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Carr, aye. Member Roberts, aye. All right, thank you. Um, and then we didn't have any um, liquor license transfer applications or breweries, wineries, and distillery requests for July. And then in your packet, you have your special event liquor permits and um, your renewal list that was sent. I am going to pass it over to Kristen C because I think she has some information about um, BLA recruitment and maybe a couple other things. Thanks, Caitlin. Good afternoon, everyone. I just wanted to provide a quick update on BLA recruitment. So. Um, we did complete a mid-year recruitment for the open position on the board, and unfortunately, we did not receive any applications. So now we need to wait until the next recruitment cycle begins at the end of the year for a position starting in March 2024. So we'll keep everyone posted when that recruitment process begins at the end of the year. But in the meantime, if you know anyone that might be interested in joining BLA, please spread the word that we have an open seat in the board in the board and we'll be doing recruitment later this year. That's all for me. Does anyone have any have, questions? Yeah, I just want to ask a question uh, independent of that. I think we talked about this briefly, but how TIPS training is working now with how online certifications work. Has anyone heard about this yet? The entire TIPS organization is no longer sending physical certifications to um, licensees or even people who take their class. It is all electronic, and the entire um, the company as a whole is just, as they go through this transition, is taking a long time. So we have a 60-day requirement here in the city of Boulder. People are not re receiving their actual certifications inside of that time. And I don't know if um, John Ballier is connected with licensing about this yet, or one of the main TIP trainers. Yeah, thank you for bringing that to our attention. We have heard some some of that from our licensees. And what we've been doing in the meantime is accepting an email from the trainer or a digital certification. Basically, we'll take any documentation they have um, because we understand that there have been some delays um, in actually getting the, the cards. So we've been trying to work with licensees to come up with other options to show that they are compliant with that requirement. I want to say thank you to licensing for understanding what's going on with that. And it sounds like the, our state legislature is working on something around a, a state certification. So that'll be interesting. That's all I had. I just want to make sure that that's something, you know, I'm sure you guys are getting some applicants coming at you with like, I don't have the certifications. Um, so I'm sure you understand that because you're seeing it way more than we are. Yeah, Great. thank you. Thanks, Kristen. All right, next we have matters from chair and members of the authority. I don't think I have any. I'm I'm wondering if uh, Mr. Stapen's going to have to do something pro bono at this point. I know, and I, I really appreciate you, Member Carr, for, um, you know, bringing that up because, you know, we do want to recognize responsible people and, and, you know, people in our community who have been great about applications. Um, but as... <laughs> Chair Califano said the special hearings have been reserved for some crazy stuff over the years. Um, and um, I'm glad that you brought that up. I'm glad we had a discussion. I think it's good that um, our board here is, is starting to really talk about those things. So I, I appreciate all of those discussions and uh, want to say thank you guys. And I, I will uh, tell you that I am going to be here at least through October. Um, so I can promise you that. And I am trying to recruit people that too. Yeah, just sure. some historical context. Um, Typically, when it's an applicant error, we just continue it to the next hearing. Um, however, if it's what we've seen with special hearings are very contentious cases, um, especially if it's been a violation that um, a stipulation wasn't signed or anything like that. And we know that it's going to be um, a little contentious and take an extra amount of time 
if we, you know, if we coupled those in a normal hearing, we'd be here till I think we did this once and it, um, it was a special hearing, but it was a 12 hour hearing. So it, it can happen. Was that the res? It was. Yeah. Yeah. But we also had some other things before that in terms of case China and things that had, but I think also, um, Matthew, we've also, if city government, if a city legacy makes a mistake, we're willing to work with that too, which is very rare, by the way, it very rarely happens. But if there's a mistake on our end, um, I think we're willing to go ahead and get a special hearing going if we've messed up. Sure. Yeah. And that, that's also, it's a good point. Like if we do a special hearing for, you know, Mr. Staben, his firm, then another lawyer comes to us with another issue. And then we, we're now having special hearings and that could set a bad precedent. Yeah. Very good point. Yeah. Did anyone else? for having the discussion? It was, it was good to hear everyone's perspective. Absolutely. Glad you brought it up. Uh, anyone else have anything? All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a member. Carl will make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that motion. All in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Carr, aye. Member Roberts, aye. We are adjourned. Sorry, <laughs> it's still in your line. Adjourned at 408. F410. Oh, it is 408. My computer's wrong. Record time for BLM. Nice job, guys. I mean, number seven, we almost were going to be faster if Stapen didn't come in. You know, we could have been even, it could have been even more record. I <laughs> uh, appreciate you guys. I'm leaving town tomorrow. So um, I hope you guys um, bear with the heat. Actually, it's going to cool off a little bit. Have a good birthday, Mike. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.